Hi everyone, my name is Ian Olson and I'm a Security Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a one-click deployment for AWS Shield Advance. This deployment is designed for customers to quickly get started with Shield Advance across multiple accounts or their entire organization. Deployment will handle subscribing and configuring Shield Advance, as well as using AWS Firewall Manager to configure Shield protection for your resources and deploy a recommended default AWS WAF WebACL. It also includes a number of Athena resources to simplify log analysis. Let's talk about our agenda for today. First, there are a few prerequisites that need to be in place. We'll cover the architecture of how this deployment works. After that, we will go through the setup and console experience while covering the mandatory inputs you'll need to provide or decide. We'll continue with what the default behavior looks like and cover the dozens of additional parameters that you can use to customize what is deployed today or you can change in the future. We'll cover a common tagging strategy that most customers will find useful when rolling out AWS Shield Advance or AWS WAF via Firewall Manager. Finally, to wrap up, we'll touch on next steps and how you can expand upon what you deploy now for several common scenarios. So, prerequisites. First off, you need to have enabled Service Managed Stack Sets for CloudFormation and AWS Firewall Manager as an AWS Organization Service. Optionally but recommended, specify a delegated administrator for both of these services. AWS Firewall Manager depends on AWS Config being in all accounts and regions with at least a specific list of resources where you intend to use Firewall Manager. We have included links on how you can set up Config in this way if you do not already have this in place. Finally, there are two Shield Advanced features that require an active business or enterprise support plan on all relevant accounts. We'll talk about those features in a bit. If you're missing any of this, we've included links to how to get those in place. Next, let's go over the architecture of what this one-click deployment template is going to do. This template creates one nested stack and three CloudFormation stack sets. The nested stack provisions general infrastructure, including an S3 bucket for WAF logs and an Athena table with some useful queries. Stack sets, specifically service managed stack sets, allow you to deploy a cloud permission template to one or more accounts and one or more regions as a single logical resource. For our three stack sets, the first handles subscribing and configuring Shield Advance, deploying to all accounts in a single region. The second stack set creates a security policy for AWS WAF and a Kinesis Data Firehose for logging. The final stack set creates another security policy for shield protection of resources. These two last stack sets deploy to a single account, the Firewall Manager Administrator or Delegate Administrator, in one or more regions and scopes. With that out of the way, let's go through the process of deploying this template. I am using a Cloud9 environment since I don't need to configure anything on my local computer. This is not a requirement, however. Clone the code repository and ensure your AWS CLI is configured with valid AWS credentials and a default region. Everything we are covering today is also written up and is in the included readme, but we are going to scroll down to the setup section directly. The script you see here will, let, will create an S3 bucket named code-oneclickshield-accountid-region and copy all the cloud permission templates into that bucket. Region is whatever you have configured, or US East 1 if no default region was configured. If you'd rather do this without the script, create or use an S3 bucket, ensure all the YAML files are copied up to that bucket. If your bucket name does not match the naming schema code-accountid-region, update any bucket references in template.yaml before you upload it to S3. Using the script option, a URL is also returned that will take you directly to CloudFormation to start deploying your template. A number of the details are also pre-populated for you as well. We'll call those out and how to get those values for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead now and launch using the URL created by the script. 
parameters here are going to be organized into logical groups with the mandatory parameters listed first. First up is Shield Advance Subscriptions. When you subscribe to Shield Advance through the console, you acknowledge four service terms around cost and service commitment. Finally, unlike typical CloudFormation where you delete a template, provision resources are normally deleted unless you explicitly configure them otherwise. In this case, if you delete this template, you are not unsubscribed from Shield Advance and subject to the usual terms of subscription. This final parameter here is acknowledging that you understand this. The next group of parameters configures IAM access and proactive engagement from the Shield response team, also known as SRT. Both of these features require a business or enterprise support plan on any account where you enable this. The first option here is if you want to grant SRT access to WAF in your AWS account. With this feature enabled, SRT during an event while working with you is able to directly update your AWS WAF WebACLs on your behalf. If you choose not to enable this feature, SRT can still provide recommendations to WebACL rules that you can make changes yourself. Proactive engagement means when one of your Shield Advance protected resources experiences a DDoS event and a health check you associate with that resource is failing, SRT will reach out to your emergency contacts you designate. In this section, you are going to choose if you wish to enable this feature and configure the first emergency contact SRT should reach out to. Later on, if you'd like, you can specify up to four additional contacts. To be clear on something, this deployment is not establishing the health check on protected resources. You will need to create and link this afterwards before proactive engagement can effectively happen. Regardless of the configured features here, you can always engage SRT through a support case. The final mandatory section is to scope where this is deployed. Your first choice for scope is which accounts to target. By default, org means all accounts within the current AWS organization. You can also choose to target or exclude a specific list of account IDs or organizational units. If we stick with org, the next value, scope details, needs the root ID for your organization. If you use the setup script to generate the URL, this value is pre-populated with your root ID. You can always get your root ID from the AWS organization's console or using the following CLI command. For account and OU scope types, instead specify a comma separated list of either account IDs or OUs. These scope details are used to determine which accounts will be subscribed to Shield Advance and included in Firewall Manager security policies for Shield and WAF. Next is the regions where Shield and WAF protection should be established. The setup script pre-populates this with your current region, but you can and should add any relevant regions that you need. This list is used to scope which regions Firewall Manager security policies are built in. Note, if you intend to protect CloudFormation or Global Accelerator, ensure this list includes US East 1 and US West 2 respectively. Subscribing and configuring Shield Advance itself is a global configuration, so this is always done in the region where you are deploying this template regardless of this parameter. Next, you need to specify the Firewall Manager Administrator account. If you chose to delegate Firewall Manager to an account that is not the account you are provisioning this template, specify that account ID here. Otherwise, leave this value as self. The setup script generated URL will pre-populate this with the correct value for you. The final option is needed behind the scenes when you create a service managed stack set. If the account you are creating this template in is a CloudFormation delegated administrator, leave this as delegated admin. If this account is your payer, set this value to self. The setup script again generated URL will pre-populate this with the correct value for you. That concludes the mandatory inputs that are needed for a successful deployment. 
The remaining parameters are optional as far as the one-click deployment being successful. However, you should review all the parameters here to ensure what is deployed is what you want. Our first section of optional parameters are additional scoping options and the policy actions available for Firewall Manager security policies. Here you can specify which regional and global resources should be SHIELD and WAF protected where applicable. SHIELD policies can also be configured to audit or remediate non-compliant resources. There are some strategies worth considering when enabling this. We're going to cover those later on when we cover scope tags in a bit. Next is AWS WAF rules. By default, the WebACL deployed includes the following WAF rules. First, a rate-based rule with a value of 10,000 and an action of count. The value of this rule refers to the number of requests an individual IP can make during a rolling 5-minute window before this rule will take action. There are also four Amazon Managed Rules, or AMRs, that are included in this policy. First is the AMR for IP reputation with a default action of block. This rule blocks requests from IPs that Amazon Threat Intelligence have identified as malicious or otherwise engaging in DDoS behavior. Additional AMRs for anonymous IPs, known bad inputs, and core rule set are also in place, however, have a count action. These rules will not block requests when they are evaluate true. This will allow us to verify using WAF logs of any potential impact before you move these rules to a block mode. Before you decided if you wanted to enable SRT access, however, there are some additional advanced options you can elect to configure. First, you can specify the name of the role used to grant SRT access, or optionally specify to use an existing IAM role instead of creating a new one. The default behavior will generate a randomly named IAM role based on CloudFormation. You can also elect to grant SRT access to S3 buckets that contain logs other than AWS WAF logs. This last item is not commonly configured. Before you decided if you wanted to enable proactive engagement and configure one emergency contact. If you chose to enable this feature, at this point, you can specify, if desired, an additional four emergency contacts. So far, you configured accounts, region, and resource types that are in scope. Firewall Manager also supports defining scope by the presence of a tag key and value. In these next two sections, you can define up to three tag names and optional values to scope shield and WAF protection, respectively. Note, if you specify multiple tags, in-scope resources must meet all tag requirements. The final parameter here is needed if this account is using LakeFormation, as additional permissions need to be configured for LakeFormation when we deploy Athena resources. That concludes the parameters available when deploying this template. At this point, we can go ahead and deploy. This might take a while, depending on how many accounts and regions you are deploying to. You can always come back later and update this stack to change any parameters. For example, you might do this to add additional accounts, regions, or resources to what is in scope. Alternatively, you may want to change scope tags or WebACL rule actions. Let's take a minute to talk about strategies. One of the more common strategies many organizations use to get started is scope tags in firewall manager security policies for an opt-in model. A common concern from organizations, or at least the application teams, is what impact AWS WAF rules may have on their application. Application teams want to have control over when these changes are introduced, and at least initially, the ability to roll them back if there is impact. Consider a scenario where we specify a scope tag of enable WAF and a value of true to be in scope for Firewall Manager for WAF. Resources in your organization don't already use this tag and the value for anything. We'll set a remediation action to automatic, but not replace existing WebACLs, if any. Application teams add this tag and value to their endpoints they manage to onboard. 
Firewall Manager evaluates this change, and Auto Remediation creates and associates an AWS WAF Web SEL. At any point, the application team can remove this tag and the resource will no longer be WAF protected. Application teams don't need to coordinate or schedule with the team that operates Firewall Manager so they can do all of this on their own schedule. At some point as an organization, you can review endpoints that have not added this scope tag and follow up about getting them to onboard. Eventually, you can decide to update your security policies to not scope to a tag and value. Any new resources simply get protected in response to them being provisioned. New applications that come online should be starting in a dev tier where there should be no risk of a production facing impact if that application happens to be impacted by the current WAF security policy. This is by no means the only tagging strategy, however, if you don't have something else in mind, this is a good general choice to start from. Let's talk about next steps and how to build upon what you deployed here. Depending on what you decided policy scope and action wise, work to get all desired endpoints shield and WAF protected so they are producing WAF logs for us to review. In your WAF logs, you are looking for potential false positives. Using the Athena resources created during this deployment, query your WAF logs for requests labeled by any Amazon managed rules in place and ensure desired traffic is not being labeled. If you see this happening, you will need to create exceptions. We've included a few resources in the video description to help you dive deeper into how to identify and create these exceptions. Once you've addressed any false positives, your goal is to move rules from a count action to a block action. Additionally, the WAF rules included are a good baseline, however, do not account for any context about your applications. You should consider if other AMRs or custom rules are appropriate. For example, there are additional AMRs for Windows and Linux OSs, WordPress applications, and advanced bot detection and mitigation options, to name a few. Finally, many customers will want or need to expand this one-click deployment beyond what you can control with the provided parameters. The most common example would be deploying multiple security policies for WAF with different rules and scopes. Common reasons why you might do this include different WebACL configs for different applications or different application tiers. For example, in non-prod, you may decide to restrict access to only specific IP addresses, while in production, endpoints should be public. Different applications may benefit from additional rules. For example, WAF offers additional AMRs for Windows or Linux OS exploits and specific applications such as WordPress. The good news is the stack set templates used in this one-click deployment to create security policies can be deployed on their own multiple times with different values. If you want to completely change the rules, replace the Manage Security section of the template and deploy that. This prevents you from needing to create your own template from scratch. I've included a few examples demonstrating this as a reference. Finally, AWS recently released an AWS solution, Automations for AWS Firewall Manager, as a reference implementation of Firewall Manager. This solution has managed security policy types beyond WAF and Shield protection. If you intend to use Firewall Manager for more than WAF and Shield, it is worth evaluating as well. That covers the one-click deployment for Shield Advance. Thanks for your time.